Luke, my brother. It's been too long. How have you been? Adams, man, I've been struggling. I can't quit smoking, and it's tearing my life apart. I get it, Luke. Life throws us these battles sometimes. Stopping smoking addiction is a personal journey, and while the Bible doesn't specifically address smoking, it does offer principles that can be applied to overcoming addiction. Here are some biblical references and principles that may help. Self-control. Galatians 5 verses 22 to 23 teaches about the fruit of the Spirit, which includes self-control. Use this as a reminder to exercise self-control over your addiction. Renew your mind. Romans 12 verse 2 suggests renewing your mind. Replace smoking with healthier habits and thoughts. Seek support. Ecclesiastes 4 verses 9 to 10 encourages seeking support from others. Join a support group or lean on your faith community for assistance. Prayer and Meditation Philippians 4 verses 6 to 7 Advocates for Prayer and Thanksgiving Use prayer and meditation to find inner peace and strength to resist the urge to smoke. Flee from Temptation 1 Corinthians 6 verse 18 advises fleeing from sexual immorality, but it can be applied to avoiding temptation. Remove smoking triggers from your life. Forgiveness. Matthew 6 verses 14 to 15 stresses forgiveness. Forgive yourself for past mistakes and focus on a smoke-free future. Let's pray together for strength. Dear Lord, we stand before you, humbled by our weaknesses. We know addiction is a mighty foe, but your strength is mightier. Grant Luke the power to break free from this grip, to heal, and to find a better path in life. Lord, I am weak, but I place my trust in your boundless strength. Please, release me from these chains of addiction, so I can live a life of purpose and health. Amos, we need to talk. I see the pain in your eyes. Your womanizing isn't just hurting you. It's causing others pain too. Adams, I don't know how to stop. I'm lost. There's hope, Amos. The Bible offers guidance on living a virtuous and morally upright life, which includes avoiding sinful behaviors such as womanizing. Here are some biblical principles and real life examples to consider. Respect for others. The Bible teaches the importance of treating all individuals with respect and dignity. In Matthew 22 verse 39, Jesus says, Love your neighbor as yourself. Womanizing often involves objectifying and disrespecting women, which goes against this principle. A man named John used to engage in womanizing behavior, but after studying the Bible and reflecting on its teachings, he decided to treat women with respect and kindness. He stopped pursuing casual relationships and instead sought meaningful connections based on mutual respect. Flee from temptation. In 1 Corinthians 6 verse 18, the Bible advises to flee from sexual immorality. This means avoiding situations and behaviors that can lead to womanizing, such as excessive flirting or pursuing multiple romantic interests simultaneously. Sarah realized that her habit of flirting with multiple men simultaneously was causing harm to her own emotional well-being and to others. She made a conscious effort to stop this behavior, focusing on building genuine friendships and connections instead. Self-control. Galatians 5 verses 22 to 23 mentions the fruit of the Spirit, including self-control. Overcoming womanizing tendencies often requires self-discipline and control over one's desires and impulses. Mark struggled with womanizing for years but, through counseling and prayer, developed self-control. He learned to channel his emotions and desires in healthy ways, ultimately finding a loving and committed relationship. Accountability Seek guidance and accountability from a trusted community or mentor who can provide support and encouragement in your journey towards better behavior. Emily joined a church group that emphasized accountability. She openly shared her struggles with womanizing tendencies with her group, and they provided her with the support and guidance needed to overcome these behaviors. 
It's important to note that change takes time and effort, and seeking guidance from a spiritual leader or therapist can be beneficial when trying to overcome womanizing behaviors from a biblical perspective. Ultimately, the goal is to cultivate respectful, loving, and committed relationships that honor both oneself and others, as guided by biblical principles. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I humbly come before you to pray for Amos, who is struggling with the womanizing addiction. Please grant him and others like him that are in this situation the strength, courage, and wisdom to overcome this harmful behavior. Help them find healing and transformation, both within themselves and in their relationships. Guide them towards self-awareness and self-control, allowing them to break free from the chains of addiction. May they seek healthy, respectful, and loving connections with others, rather than harmful and destructive ones. Grant them the support and resources they need to embark on this journey of recovery, and surround them with a network of understanding and compassionate individuals who can provide guidance and encouragement. We trust in your divine grace and mercy to lead Amos towards a path of healing, redemption, and spiritual growth. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Sam, this isn't the way. Alcohol won't heal your wounds. I can't control it anymore, Adams. I'm trapped. You're not alone. Sam. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit, Psalm 34 verse 18. The Bible offers guidance on overcoming various challenges, including alcoholism, through spiritual and moral principles. Here are some biblical ways to address alcoholism. Seek God's help. Turning to God in prayer for strength and guidance is a fundamental step. You can find support and strength through your faith. Self-control. The Bible emphasizes self-control as a fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 5 verses 22 to 23. Work on developing self-discipline to resist the temptation of alcohol. Accountability. Share your struggles with a trusted friend, pastor, or support group within your faith community for accountability and encouragement. James 5 verse 16. Flee temptation. Avoid situations or places that trigger the urge to drink. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 18 and also 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13. Renew your mind. Transform your thinking by meditating on scriptures that promote sobriety and self-control. Romans 12 verse 2. Replace with positive habits. Fill the void left by alcohol with positive activities, service, or ministry. Ephesians 5 verse 18. Forgiveness. Seek forgiveness from God and others for past actions related to alcoholism, and forgive yourself as well. 1 John 1 verse 9. Support and community. Engage with a local church or faith-based recovery program for additional support and guidance. Let's pray for your recovery. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today with heavy hearts, seeking your grace and mercy for our beloved Sam, who is struggling with addiction. We acknowledge the pain and turmoil that addiction has brought into their life and the lives of those who care deeply for them. Lord, we ask for your guidance and strength as we lift Sam's addiction up to you. Please grant him the courage to recognize the destructive power of alcohol and the desire to seek help. Fill his heart with the determination to overcome this battle and the wisdom to make the right choices. We also pray for his physical and emotional healing. May you provide them with the strength to endure the challenges of recovery and the resilience to resist the temptations that lie ahead. Lord, surround Sam with a supportive community of friends and loved ones who will encourage his journey to sobriety. Help us to be patient, understanding, and compassionate, standing by Sam's side through the highs and lows of recovery. Above all, Lord, we pray for your divine intervention in Sam's life. Break the chains of addiction that bind him and others in this situation, and replace them with the freedom and peace that can only come from you. Help them find purpose and meaning in life that is far greater than any substance. We place Sam and others like him in your loving hands, trusting in your unfailing love and grace. May your light shine upon Sam's path to recovery, 
leading him towards a life of sobriety, happiness, and fulfillment. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Adams. Adams, I don't need your prayers or your faith. This whole redemption thing, it's just words to me. Cynthia, don't be so resistant. God's grace can change even the most hardened hearts. I've made my choices, Adams. I'll live with them, no matter what you say. Cynthia, I won't give up on you. You may be stubborn, but God's love is more persistent. Adams, you just don't get it, do you? I'm not interested in your God or your redemption. I've accepted who I am. Cynthia, I see the potential in you, even if you refuse to acknowledge it. Your past doesn't define your future. Well, Adams, you can say or believe whatever you want, but I won't change for anyone or anything. Cynthia, I'll continue to pray for you, whether you like it or not. Maybe one day you'll realize that redemption is not about weakness, but about finding strength and admitting your mistakes. Theo, your path has led you here. It's time for change. I've heard so many people, Adams. I don't know how to be different, Theo. I believe that no one is beyond redemption, even in the face of the darkest actions. Our faith teaches us that God can transform even the most wayward hearts. Remember what King David prayed in Psalm 51 verse 10, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. It's a plea for a fresh start, a turning point in one's life. But Adams, can I really change? Can I make amends for all the wrongs I've done? Theo. The Bible is filled with stories of individuals who turned their lives around through God's grace. Look at the Apostle Paul, once a persecutor of Christians, who became one of the most influential figures in spreading the gospel. Your transformation is possible, but it begins with genuine repentance and a desire for change. I want to believe that Adams, but I'm scared. I don't even know where to begin. It's okay to be scared, Theo. Starting anew can be daunting, but you don't have to do it alone. Let's start by praying together for your redemption and for God to guide your steps. We'll also explore how you can make amends for the hurt you've caused, seeking forgiveness from those you've wronged, and finding a path to was a life of purpose and righteousness. Adams, I appreciate your support and faith in me. I'm willing to try, to seek God's forgiveness and find a way to make things right. That's a promising step, Theo. Remember, it won't be easy, and there may be challenges along the way, but with God's help and our support, you can overcome them. Adams, can you help me understand more about God's plan for redemption? How do I go about seeking forgiveness and making amends? Absolutely, Theo. Redemption begins with sincere repentance. It means acknowledging your actions, feeling genuine remorse, and turning away from your past life of crime. You must also seek forgiveness from God through prayer, just as we are doing now. What about those I've hurt, Adams? How can I make amends to them? Making amends to those you've harmed is an essential part of the process. It means taking responsibility for your actions and trying to right the wrongs. This may involve reaching out to your victims, expressing your remorse, and, if possible, offering restitution for the losses they've suffered. Adams, I've put myself in danger by leaving my old life behind. What if my former associates come after me? Theo. It's crucial to prioritize your safety as well. God calls for change, but he also values your life. We'll work on a plan to keep you safe while you navigate this transformation. Remember, you're not alone in this journey. You have faith, support, and a community that believes in your potential for change. Thank you, Adams, for showing me the way. I'm ready to embrace this journey of redemption, no matter how challenging it may be. Theo, with God's grace and your determination, there's hope for a new beginning. Let's continue to pray for strength and guidance as you take these steps to what a better life. Let's pray Theo. Dear Heavenly Father, today, I come before you with a heavy heart, 
filled with hope for Theo, a soul who has walked in the shadows of crime and violence. Lord, I lift up Theo's life to you as they seek to surrender their heart to Christ. Thank you for your boundless mercy and forgiveness, which know no limits. I believe that no one is beyond the reach of your saving grace, and I pray earnestly for Theo's transformation. Please, Holy Spirit, work in Theo's heart, convict them of their actions, and lead them to true repentance. Break the chains of sin that have bound them for so long, replacing them with the chains of your love, grace, and righteousness. Grant Theo the courage to turn away from their life of crime and violence, guiding them on a new path, illuminated by your word and your divine purpose. Shower them with wisdom and understanding, helping them discern right from wrong. Lord Jesus, you came to seek and save the lost, and I entrust Theo, this lost soul, into your loving hands. Pour out your compassion and love upon them, drawing them closer to you each day. I pray for the support and guidance of a loving Christian community that can walk beside Theo, helping them grow in faith and encouraging their newfound journey with you. I believe, Lord, in your boundless transformative power, and I trust that you can turn Theo's life around, making it a testament to your amazing grace. In Jesus' name, I offer this personal prayer for Theo, trusting in your love and mercy. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today with hearts full of gratitude and love, thanking you for the incredible blessing of Luke, Amos, Sam, and Theo. We are truly grateful for how they have received and embraced your word, Lord. Their open hearts and eager spirits have been a source of inspiration and joy to me and every other believer watching this video right now. We ask that you continue to shower them with your wisdom, guidance, and grace as they walk in your ways. May their faith continue to grow, and may they be shining examples of your love and light to those around them. Lord, we also lift up Cynthia to you in prayer. We acknowledge that her heart may be hardened, but we know that with your mighty and merciful touch, all things are possible. We ask that you soften her heart, Lord, and help her to receive your word with open arms. May your love and forgiveness be a beacon of hope in her life, leading her to a deeper relationship with you. In your name, we pray, Amen.